It has got left a very big gap between the grandmother and the grandchild. Hence the grandmother is 80, 70 years old, but is still looking after a child that is four years old or six years old. <laughs> When, when a parent dies, the son dies, the daughter dies, both were married somewhere, and they leave children. And some of these children are too young to fend for themselves. I stay with 10 grandchildren who are all orphans. I am the only adult here. My five children died within a year of each other, each one leaving their children with me. What pains me most and sometimes makes me cry is that I now have to look after these children when I am old and weak. I want them to grow up and have a better future because when I die, they will be left completely on their own. The situation now at the moment, one would look at it both sides, that now it's better because at least the HIV has been controlled to a certain extent, people are getting more educated about it and um, people tend to see it every day on TV, they hear it on radios, you know, abstain and this and that. But before, there was a problem because many did not have a privilege to a TV set or to a radio to get to know these things. And most of those that were within the age of having these children that are now left now were I would like to say they didn't have the opportunity to know and to understand and to be well educated about HIV AIDS. Hence there's so many deaths, hence there's so many orphans that were left behind. HIV AIDS has led to a significant loss of lives in Africa. To date, no cure has been found to deal with this deadly virus. A lot, however, has been done to highlight the virus and document people suffering from it. I have not yet seen a visual representation on the effect it has on the elderly who are forced to look after their grandchildren at a time when they themselves need to be looked after, a time when they feel that their work is done and it's time for their children to continue the family legacy. <laughs> These are just some examples of a grandmother forced to look after her grandchildren. Over the past few years in Africa, a lot of elderly people have had to take part in an unusual case of role reversal. Instead of their young burying them, as they get old, it is them burying their young. The question is, how do they cope? Recently I've visited my country of birth, Zimbabwe, to see if I could capture the effects of HIV, AIDS, orphans on the older retiring generation. <laughs>
Hope is Vital is an organisation that caters for children who are orphaned mostly due to HIV AIDS, children who are living positively and other vulnerable children. The organisation was founded in 2008 by Judith Gogodo, a 37-year-old mother of three and an orphan. After being an orphan and looking at what one goes through as an orphan, it inspired me to look at others who are in the same situation, but much younger than me, what they're going through. Hence, the start of hope is vital. The traditional African family structure is massively corroding, as young parents fall sick and die. The HIV pandemic has now claimed the lives of a whole generation. The elderly will now never have the pleasure of enjoying their retirement. Instead of them being looked after by their children, it is now them who have the responsibility of looking after their grandchildren. It has got left a very big gap between the grandmother and the grandchild. Hence the grandmother is 80, 70 years old, but is still looking after a child that is four years old or six years old. This 80 year old grandmother and this 70 year old grandfather, both of them cannot even fend for themselves because they don't have anything. They don't work, they can't even go into the fields to do anything because of age. You know, when, when, when a parent dies, the son dies, the daughter dies, both were married somewhere, and they leave children. And some of these children are too young to fend for themselves. But when these are left, they are left to a grandmother or grandfather, who is also completely useless, who at that time will be a pensioner somewhere or somewhere. Honestly speaking, it becomes very difficult for the granny to look after the children. And at the time, these children end up, you know, selling whatever they sell in the street. And what is worse is they may even appear in beer hours during the night because you see they'll be looking after themselves and looking after their grannies who are at home. That alone is very, is very bad. It's not healthy for a school child to do. You find now we have more families that are child-headed, even if there is a grandmother and a grandfather, because the grandmom and the granddad cannot do much. So the children themselves are having to fend for themselves, look after themselves. And this has really, really been something very sad. The needs of children around the world are the same. But some children in Africa are deprived of some of the basic necessities, such as education, adequate shelter, adequate nutrition, proper health care, parental guidance and care. The sub-Saharan region has the highest level of HIV prevalence and this is reflected in the rapid rise of the number of orphan children. In 2007, Zimbabwe had about 1 million orphan children due to AIDS, which is approximately 77% of all orphans, the highest percentage in sub-Saharan Africa. The figure is expected to rise as years go by. It's sad because three quarters of the children that we are helping or assisting right now have had both parents either deceased through the HIV pandemic or have had one parent deceased and the other parent just walks off because they feel they cannot care for the children that are left behind. And now we have grandmothers who are supposed to be um, looked after by their sons and daughters who have now left these children and she is the one who has to now look after these children without any assistance from anyone else. The society itself only looks because no one has anything to assist with. There was a, a, an organization which was called the Widows. They were actually moving in schools. They wanted to help those vulnerable children, especially the orphans. But at the end of the day, when you gathered all the papers, the death certificates, including those without death certificates, definitely the, the number almost reached almost three quarters of the population. That actually shows that a lot of children, or most children, uh, are vulnerable. You know. They want to help someone somewhere. Some are, you know, stigmatized in the communities where they come from. Maybe when your mother dies, you are left with the siblings, the, the, the sisters of the mother, and you know, the treatment itself is so bad. That will actually add to the impact because when a child is unable to pay, there are certain forces that are behind, which are beyond the child's comprehension.